In Creo Parametric, you can perform cable harness design using a process called logical referencing. And in that process, you're going to create a schematic in Creo Schematics and then export an XML file that contains information about your connectors, your wires and cables, and your spools. And then by reading that into Creo Parametric, you can automate a lot of the process. And in this video, we'll take a look at reading in the XML file, performing different comparisons, generating the spools, and auto-designating our components. And in another video, we'll create something called a network and then automatically route wires and cables. Here is the XML file that I am going to read in. And as you can see, it is in XML format and it contains all the important information from the schematic in order to perform the routing of the wires and cables in Creo Parametric. Here I have essentially the same assembly that I used for performing manual routing. I've got my harness assembly. I've created a skeleton part and it's got a shrink wrap feature. Let's open this in its own separate window. So I can click on it and from the mini toolbar choose the open command. And right now my skeleton is hidden. Let's make it visible. And there we can see our routing references and the different components. Let's choose applications, cabling to get into cabling mode. And you'll notice almost all the different icons are grayed out. So let's use the import command. And here in the menu manager, we have three different choices. You can import a mentor graphics file. You could use a neutral wire format file. And here we have the Creo schematics option. And I'm going to choose chosen layers just to show you something. Let me go to my folder with my XML file. And here's the one that I want to use. I'll choose open. I use layers a lot in Creo Schematics and just give you a little bit of the uses I have for it. A lot of times in a schematic, I'll have all my different wires and cables. So for example, I might have my power cables, then I'll have different avionics cables, and then these cables and that cables. And I'll use layers to name them different things. And then I'll have multiple harness assemblies and I'll read certain layers into certain assemblies. So trust me, take my advice, use layers in side of Creo Schematics. And I actually wasn't paying attention. I believe I selected all the different layers. Uh, let's see in here. Now to see what I read in, I can choose the compare button. And in the menu manager, I'm gonna start off with having everything selected. I'm gonna see what wires brought in, cables, connectors, wire spools, and cable spools. And you check the match button to see your progress as you're performing wire cable routing. And here I am having them listed alphabetically. Let's click execute and we can see that we have a number of wires in the right hand column. This is what comes in from our XML file. This column is what we have done in our 3D model. And since I just read in the file, you can see that pretty much everything, I mean, everything will be empty because I haven't done anything. So it wants to generate about actually 24 wires. There's this W01 before W001. So it wants me to route all those different cables from the schematic, excuse me, all those different wires. Here I have a cable and it wants all these different components to be designated in the assembly. And there are a lot inside of here, but no worries, we'll get through that pretty quickly. And it wants to generate these different wire spools and one cable spool. Let's close out of here. And then we're gonna quit out of the comparison and I'm gonna start off by creating my spools. I'll click on the spools command and we can read in spools or create them. And since I read in that XML file, we have this option here to create spools from logical data. And here are all the different ones that were in the XML file. I'm going to select all and then choose done select and done return. You might have noticed on the left hand side of the screen, we had a bunch of features pop into the model. So here are our, are our spools. And again, those are assembly level features. Now that we have the spools done, let's automatically designate our connectors. So we go to the auto designate command. 
And here in the dialog box, these are all the different connectors that were listed and came in from the XML file. We saw them in the comparison. And when I scroll down through here, a bunch are listed as missing. But here we see a lot that were automatically matched. In the XML data, it said, hey, look for components with these particular names. And if you find a unique occurrence of that component in the cabling assembly, they'll end up being matched up. So it's able to auto match a whole bunch of different components inside of here. And you can see that we have them designated in the model tree on the left hand side. And let's go and I'm going to move this over. Let's move it on top of the model tree for now. Let's start off at the bottom. So right now it's looking for something that it wants to use a reference designator of TEL on. And it's looking for a model with this particular name. If I click on this in the auto designate dialog box, it's now highlighting four different components that have that particular name that it's looking for. That's why the status column here is saying multiple. And in this case, I happen to know that I want to use the assembly over here. If I move my mouse over, right now I'm getting the part. So I'm going to use query select or tapping the right mouse button until I get the assembly to highlight. And then when I have that assembly highlighted, I'm going to left click and here change the status to manual match. I'm going to click apply, not OK. And I do this a lot while I am using the auto designation dialog box. I'll click apply and now when I scroll back to the bottom, it auto matched another couple of components. It was looking for a connector called CON2L and a connector called CON2R inside of that assembly and it found a unique instance of each of them and was able to automatically match them up. And you can there you can see as I'm clicking on different entities how it highlights what it corresponds to in the model. So for example, there's that CON9 connector, so forth and so on. Here's TB6. It's an assembly with all those other different connectors. But let's scroll up to the top to continue on with our auto designation. Here we have 11, interesting name. And here are, there are four different assemblies in here that match up with having this particular assembly name as designated from the XML file. And I happen to know that this is supposed to be the one on the left. So again, I'll tap the right mouse button until the assembly with the correct name highlights and I will select it. And they cheated in this one. There are a bunch of clip components inside of this subassembly and they gave each of them a unique name so that when I hit the apply button, it automatically matches them up. You wouldn't really see that in the real world, but for this data set, they did that to make the process a little bit easier. All right, let's continue on. Next up, we have BPEL reference designator, and now there are only three of those different assemblies left that this could correspond to, and it wants to be the one over here. Let me tap the right mouse button again to get to the assembly, and let me go down. I know it's going to automatically match up all those different clips when I click the apply button. Let's go to BPLR. It wants to be one of those two and it's the next one in line. So I'm going to again tap the right mouse button to query select till I get the correct assembly highlighted and select it. And so now that is a manual match. And in a second I'm going to click the apply button and all of these will be automatically matched and all of these will be automatically matched. And this one for BTEL, by process of elimination, there will only be one other model with this particular name left. So it's going automatic, to automatically match it as well as the clips inside of there. So let's click the apply button. And there you see all the additional auto matches for BPELR, BPLR, and that BTEL I was just mentioning. Let's continue on with the process. So now we have reference designator CEL. And I click on that and there are three of the other different assemblies that are left and it's supposed to be this one over here. So I will query select until I get to that one. And now we have CELR. Okay, it's one of these four different components over here. 
and this is going to be the leftmost part. Let's select that one. I'm going to click the apply button. So as I'm doing this, I'm clicking apply to check my progress and see what I have left. Okay, L-T-E-L-R. That's going to be this one over here. And let's see, P-E-L. It's one of those two. In this case, it's going to be this one over here. Let me query select and then select this assembly. And again, I'll click the apply button. And we can see that more stuff is going to be automatically matched. And now we're just down to a handful of things left. Let's see, P-E-L-R, one of those two. And that's going to be this particular part. Just double checking the name real quick. And now when I hit apply, everything has been designated inside of here. So I'll click the OK button. And if I take a look in the model tree, we can see the designations listed. And if I expand some of these different subassemblies, we can see the different components inside of there are designated as well. So for example, TEL01, TEL02, et cetera, and so on. And that's what you're getting out of using an XML file from Creo Schematics. It's a way of organizing and planning your wire harness routing, bringing the information in, and automatically doing a bunch of work for you, like creating your spools and designating your components. Again, there are a lot of components in there. In the other video, I did manual desi designation, and you saw that that took me a while, but by having that information in the XML file, it saves me a lot of work. And one last thing in this video, just like I did in the other video, I'm going to create my harness part. So let's scroll up here and create harness. And for the name of this one, let's call it harness underscore 2364. And I'll just use dash 01. I'm not going to fill in a common name. Let's click the OK button. And now when I scroll down to the bottom, here I have my harness part created. Now I have the harness. A whole bunch of other different icons are available to me available to me and in the next video I'm going to set up a network that will allow me to auto route my different wires and cables. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.